We're here today with Mike Martin. He is uh, visiting DX Engineering and we're very happy to have him here today. Mike is K3RFI and uh, has a long experience in amateur radio and also has a quite successful business that is tied to amateur radio. Mike, why, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Uh, let's see, I got involved in, uh, in uh, the utility industry about 35 years ago and uh, I wasn't there very long before I got introduced to amateur radio problems uh, via the, the power company I was dealing with. Uh, they were very in, uh, involved in the amateur community and solving their problems and uh, I got involved with it and uh, enjoyed it. I enjoyed uh, all the complaints and even more so solving the complaints and there were plenty of them. All right, so what kind of complaints are these uh, that, that you're dealing with? You, you said you're involved with the power company. What do you, what were you doing? Well, the power company is uh, the center of all complaints. If there's something to complain about, it goes to the power company. And one of their biggest complaints when I got there were power line interference problems. Uh, whenever there's something interfering with electronics, uh, whether it be two-way radio, receivers, whatever the case may be, they people call and complain to the power company, and the power company has to go out and prove that it that it is not them, uh, and sometimes it is them. So we have to mitigate those problems. We have so to figure out a way to solve them. How, how was your experience in amateur radio? How did this tie into your professional career at working for a power company? This sounds like you were on both sides of the street. <laughs> yeah, I was. Actually, I, uh, I, got, interest, I got introduced into uh, amateur radio by the customers that I dealt with in the power company. Uh, I spent every day, all day, in uh, customers' homes that were ham radio operators, and uh, the first question when I walked in the door was, are you ham? Do you have a ticket? And uh, after a couple of years of doing this and, and watching the stack of, of uh, Morse code tapes and, and how-to books stacking up in the corner, I decided to start reading them, and I uh, went and got my ticket. Power company's business boomed with interference complaints because it was broadcasted all over the place that the power company interference investigator was a ham radio operator and, uh, and had just got his ticket. And immediately the following day, it was a Sunday, that I took my test, and Monday morning, my uh, inbox was pretty full. <laughs> so you, you think that the involvement of your professional career, which then you know, blossomed into a great hobby in amateur radio, um, tell us about the ties and the people that you've met along the way because of now that you're a, a real ham. Well, the people that I've met, oh, it's, it's a huge range of people. I mean, there's all walks of life come through amateur radio. Uh, there's no limitations. I mean, I've, I've met uh, some of the poorest people in the country with a radio, and I've met some of the richest people in the, company with a ra in, in the country with a radio. There's no limitations. It's, it's really amazing. Uh, some really great people, uh, very helpful people, and, it, and that was real instrumental in me be getting successful at locating these problems. I spent years looking for things I couldn't find, and. Uh, there were many times when I would go out at uh, 11 o'clock at night with about five or six hams from the community and we'd go out looking for problems. We would wait till midnight, 11 or 12 o'clock at night when there was no traffic and we would all be out there with yaggies and running around looking for noise and I didn't have a clue of what I was doing at the time and uh, they, uh, they really helped me get to where I am. I, I get this feeling that you love looking for noise. I mean that at, noise is your foe but there's nothing more satisfactory to you, nothing that gives you more of a thrill than that thrill of the hunt for the noise. Yeah, it, it's, it, it is thrilling. I mean, there's other things I like to do too, obviously, but <laughs> there it is, it's, it's a lot of fun. The satisfaction is, is really what makes it great, the satisfaction of finding and solving the problem. Uh, there's a lot of people in life with problems and this is a really, it's, uh, it's just hard to imagine that someone could have a hobby and spend 10 years trying to resolve an issue that keeps them from performing it and uh, to go out and be able to solve that problem is pretty rewarding. So you work with power companies all over the country. Um, you've been to Canada, done some work there. You also work with the American Radio Relay League. Tell us about some of the, the work that you do with the ARRL. Well, I got introduced to their RFI crew uh, several years back and um, you know, 
power line interference is, is probably one of the biggest obstacles that, that hams face and the AWRL got involved in this uh, with assisting the FCC and they had contacted me about some really old problems that they were having and uh, very quickly we built a good relationship. Um, I, uh, I go to the AWRL about once a year, every now and then I'll skip a year, but I go up there quite often. I stay in contact with them regularly. Uh, they uh, consult with me with different issues and uh, um, our relationship has gotten really good, really strong and we have done a tremendous, or they, actually the AWRL, I can't take credit for it, they, uh, they have done a lot for mitigating these problems, for finding the, putting the people together that solve these problems. And that's something that wasn't there before the AWRL got involved in doing this. Uh, and on your own website, and what, what is that website? RFIservices.com. RFIservices.com. On your own website, you have a lot of tips and hints for guys that, uh, that might have noise problems. A good place to start. Yeah. Uh, and when I set this website up, I wanted it to be informational. And my, the biggest obstacle that, that, that hams have is trying to determine what type of noise they have and where the noise is coming from. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of misconceptions. Uh, because it's noise doesn't mean it's a utility. And, uh, when you put in the factor that 80% of amateur radio problems are not power line, I thought it would be very useful to identify some of these things to eliminate the 80% of the things that they have. So there's a lot of examples on my website about uh, non-power line noises. You click on a page or click on a button and it plays a noise that's not a power line noise. And, uh, and I've gotten some really great reviews from people, great comments from people, because it eliminated the hassle of going through the power company. Now, a lot of times hams will spend years dealing with a power company just to find out it isn't power line noise, and that's a lot of wasted time, you know. Well, you, you can understand, uh, and, and you've seen it firsthand, how somebody can buy a new radio. Maybe they buy it from DX Engineering. They unbox it, hook it up, and put the antenna in the back of the radio, only to find out that there's 20 over 9 or 30 over 9 noise on many bands, and there's just no enjoyment. And, and I know you, you've said uh, one time, you said, you know, this is a hobby that can be ruined. I mean, really ruined by power line noise or noise from outside influences that the, the guy who's got the amateur radio license doesn't have any control over. Yeah, that, it, you know, when you have noise, uh, you speak to people and, and they want to say, uh, they may mention that uh, you need this radio, you need a better quality radio, you know, call these people, get a good radio, and you get a better radio, and really what you end up with is better quality noise, because the noise, <laughs> wherever you want to go, there's noise, so you, you can't get rid of noise with a good radio. Um, uh, you can't eliminate your noise problems with a better radio. You have to go out and find it, and you have to fix it. And so, and the great thing, I think, over your, the span that you've been doing this, 35 years, I mean, you have seen the good, the bad, and the ugly in the noise business. Oh, absolutely. And so your experience and, and the fact that you share a lot of that experience on your website and your seminars, working with the ARL, working with the FCC, um, I can tell you here at DX Engineering, we're excited about our association with you and uh, we're, we're starting to carry a lot more of the books, uh, the RFI books, the AC power line interference books, and we do have um, some low interference products in, in some of the wall warts that we carry, trying to help you and your crusade to rid <laughs> amateur radio of noise problems. Mike, thanks very much for coming in today and talking to us here at DX Engineering, and we wish you lots of noise-finding luck in the future. Thank you, thank you, Tim.